Good morning, everybody. My name is Sam Harris. I'm really excited you asked me to come here and present. I know some of y'all, but would you mind go ahead and introducing yourselves? All right, hi, my name is Emily Bulwer. Do you have a name sign? My name is Brittany Graven. My name is Megan Uzi. This is my name sign. My name is Julie Ship. What's your name? Hello, you. Your name? Julie Ship. Just do J Ship for the sign name. Brittany Henderson. I don't have a name sign. I'm sorry. Name sign. My name is Erin Grooms. My name is Sydney. Um, my name sign is uh, Shiny Eyes. <laughs> and then my name is. My name is Josh Parker, and this is my name sign. My name is Sarah. R. Ra Ra. That's my name sign, yes. Alright, my name is Shelly Brady. It's an SB you? on the left shoulder. Who are you? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to let you know a little bit about my background. I was born in Massachusetts. Both of my parents are deaf. And I'm one of six children. I am the fourth in line. My older brother, oh, never mind. And, um, one of my older brothers is hearing. All the rest are deaf. I then moved to Colorado and went to um, a deaf school there. And after that, I transferred to a mainstream school. And I had three or four classes there. And I played sports. I stayed in the dorms. After graduating high school, I went to Gallaudet. I was there for six years. I got both my bachelor's and my master's degree there. Um, my first major was um, math. I really enjoyed it, but when I got into it, I realized it just got harder yeah. and harder and harder, and I just really didn't know what to do. Math theories, how do you prove it? I, mm, not for me. I always enjoyed being involved in performances, deaf performances, movies, things like that. So I dabbled in a few different jobs, teaching high schools, community colleges, Gallaudet, and now here I am at Troy. So that's me in a nutshell. So now moving on to my presentation today, the philosophy of signs signing and the philosophy of language. I prefer to use this sign for philosophy instead of the initialized sign P. So, when did sign language first emerge? Come on. I see some weird facial expressions. When did people start signing or start talking about signing? You seem like you're not sure. 300 BC? About, eh, okay. That's what I'm going to explain today, how sign language originated and so on and so forth. During the presentation, I will stop and start. If you can't see me or anything, just raise your hand and let me know. Now we're going to talk about the scope of linguistics. Now, what do you think that linguistic means? Back in the time of the Greeks, that we're going to discuss what linguistics meant to them. About 300, 400 BC. Okay, pay attention to Socrates. 
Now, he was a very famous philosopher. I'm sure all many of you know about him. But yeah, Plato was his student, and they actually discussed the topic of names and how exactly does that... How do we actually come to name things? Like, take this table, for example. Why? Why? Why is it named that? Okay, yes, it's a table. Now, why is it called that exactly? How did that even come to be? Like, way before it was actually named, how, where did the, that name originate from? All right, pay attention right here. Now, how does the name actually develop? All right, so when you're voicing, you say the name of any any word and you're you know exactly what it is. But how how do you know that exactly? If it doesn't have a name, how do you know what to call it? Before it was given a title, what exactly were you, would you reference to it as? Now, if you look here, it's a discussion about exactly how we communicate if we can't use language. So we use our gestures. We point. I mean, just from a point, look at, ex look at all of the information that you can receive from that. But that's exactly how it started naming, from just the point. That was the deaf perspective. Using gestures, it actually showed other, other people in the deaf community exactly what they're talking about. It was about 300 and 400 BC when that discussion actually started, started to appear. So if you want to express something such as the light, what do you do exactly? How do you do that? You would have to point at it. Alright, that discussion focused on gestures and exactly from facial expressions and so forth. But it was based on the research and discussions of that dialogue that actually came to be this thesis. It, I mean, it was really unfortunate that they would just have the discussions, but they would just push them aside because not enough attention was given to them. All right, Aristotle. He was another philosopher who also focused on emotion. He was very misunderstood. That was the thing about Aristotle. He thought that the hearing, hearing meant understanding. That was the only way that it could be. Now, if you, you actually hear the concept, then you, you understand what's being conversed. But the deaf people, they're, they're the dumb, ignorant type of people. Uh, they can't understand. That's the problem. They don't they can't hear, so they don't understand. That was Aristotle's philosophy. But his actual point was based on the discussion. It was, that was how it started to develop namings and labels. Alright, is everyone good? All right, next we're going to focus on St. Augustine. Now, he was a famous philosopher. Now, his discussion solely focused on supporting... He actually focused on the challenge of not being able to speak and equaling that to conversing. Can I... Uh, 
actually using that to connect with God. All right, signifier. What exactly does that mean? Anyone? Is it similar to a classifier? Classifier. No, classifiers are different. I wouldn't say that exactly. I mean, just, it means something. Just look at that. It's right there. It's a table. So, yeah. It doesn't have a meaning behind it. So you would just have to use... It's, it's something. It's, it hasn't yet been signified. So, from everyone else's perspective, it serves the same purpose. Now, how do you exactly say a gesture? Is that possible? 